You're about to discover the secret sauce of top CEOs and what you need to do so you won't be a sucker in life with the six keys from the book Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. Robert Cialdini often hailed as the godfather of influence. With a PhD in psychology, Cialdini has spent decades studying the mechanisms behind human decision-making. His seminal work, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion, is the culmination of years of research, combining scientific rigor with practical real-world examples. The book has sold millions of copies worldwide and has been translated into over 30 languages. But why is this book so highly appreciated? First, it brings academic research to the masses, demystifying complex psychological principles and making them accessible and applicable for anyone. Whether you're a marketer, a business leader, or just someone interested in understanding human behavior, this book offers invaluable insights. It's a book that crosses professional boundaries. CEOs, salespeople, marketers, negotiators, and politicians all swear by its teachings. Even people outside of these professions find its insights profoundly impactful in their everyday lives, making it a universally relevant read. Let's explore six key principles presented in the book that will help you become better at influencing, but also protecting yourself from other people's bad influence. The principle of reciprocity is the first rule presented and is foundational to understanding human behavior and influence. Let's say you've recently met someone in your industry whom you admire and would like to form a long-term professional relationship with. Instead of immediately asking for a favor, like an introduction to a key contact or advice on your project, you could offer something of value first. For instance, you could share an article or research paper that you think might benefit them. Or you could introduce them to someone in your own network who could help advance their projects or goals. The key is to make the initial gesture both genuine and relevant to their interests or needs. By doing this, you're not only providing immediate value, but also invoking the principle of reciprocity. The person you've helped will naturally be more inclined to assist you in the future, opening the door for a reciprocal, mutually beneficial relationship. The principle says that human beings are hardwired to return favors and strive for balanced social relationships. When someone does something for you, a kindness, a favor, or a gift, you feel a psychological obligation to repay that gesture in some form. This innate tendency extends beyond interpersonal relationships and can be observed in various social and business contexts. The act of gift giving creates a sense of indebtedness, compelling the recipient to reciprocate in some way, often by agreeing to a request or a transaction they might have otherwise declined. It's not the value of the gift that matters, but the act of giving itself that triggers this powerful response. Cialdini points out that the rule of reciprocity is so ingrained in our social fabric that it often operates subconsciously, making us susceptible to manipulation if not carefully considered. Some marketers, negotiators, and influencers exploit this principle, sometimes unethically, to secure compliance from others. Therefore, understanding reciprocity is not just beneficial for leveraging influence, but also crucial for defending oneself against undue manipulation. In summary, the principle of reciprocity is a pervasive force governing human interactions. It creates a sense of obligation, driving us to repay what we have received and thereby maintains a balance in social and commercial relationships. While the principle can be employed for mutual benefit, it's essential to recognize its potency and be cautious of its manipulative potential. The principle of commitment and consistency is the second key rule elucidated by Robert Cialdini in his book. Suppose you are a team leader who wants to increase productivity among your team members. You could employ the principle of commitment and consistency by asking each team member to verbally state their individual goals for the week during a meeting. Once these goals are shared openly, team members are more likely to follow through on them due to a psychological need to be consistent with their stated commitment. This public commitment acts as a self-imposed accountability mechanism, increasing the likelihood of task completion. According to the principle, once we make a choice or take a stance, we feel pressure to behave consistently with that commitment. This drive for consistency is rooted in our desire for cognitive coherence. Our minds are uncomfortable with contradiction, and we seek to align our actions with our beliefs and past behavior. Therefore, if we commit to something openly, we are more inclined to follow through with it to maintain a consistent self-image. In the book, Cialdini discusses how commitment devices can be used both positively and negatively. 
For example, the foot-in-the-door technique is a common sales tactic that takes advantage of this principle. A salesperson may ask for a small favor, like filling out a survey, before asking you to make a purchase. Once you've agreed to the smaller request, you're psychologically more inclined to agree to a larger, related request due to your desire to appear consistent in your actions. However, the principle of commitment and consistency isn't only a tool for persuasion. It's also a psychological lever we can pull to reinforce our own habits and beliefs. By making public commitments, we can hold ourselves accountable and increase the likelihood of achieving our goals. In summary, understanding the principle of commitment and consistency is invaluable for both influencing behavior and understanding how you yourself are influenced. Recognizing the cognitive need for consistency can help you use this principle ethically and effectively, whether you are persuading others or trying to bolster your own willpower. The third principle that Cialdini discusses is social proof, an important rule for understanding the psychology of influence. Let's say you own a restaurant and notice that despite having great food and service, you're not attracting as many customers as you'd like. One way to apply the principle of social proof is to display customer testimonials or ratings prominently in your window or on your website. Even better, if your restaurant has been reviewed or endorsed by a local food critic or celebrity, make sure to highlight that as well. By showcasing how much other people enjoy your establishment, new potential customers are more likely to give it a try, influenced by the apparent approval of others. The social proof principle states that when people are uncertain about what to do, they will look to others to guide their actions. This is particularly true in unfamiliar situations where we don't have enough information to make a decision. In essence, we deem a behavior as more correct if we see others performing it. Cialdini provides multiple examples in his book to demonstrate the power of social proof. One classic instance is the laugh track used in many TV comedy shows. Even though viewers know the laughter is canned, it still has the psychological effect of making the jokes seem funnier, simply because others are laughing. The principle extends beyond mere mimicry and can manifest in more nuanced ways, like online reviews for products or social media likes for posts, both of which can heavily influence perception and behavior. However, social proof can also be manipulated or exploited, such as in the case of astroturfing, where companies create fake reviews to give the appearance of widespread approval for their product or service. Understanding the power of this principle is therefore not only helpful for leveraging influence, but also vital for critically evaluating the information we consume and the actions we consider taking. In summary, social proof is a powerful psychological mechanism that drives much of our behavior. It serves as a mental shortcut in decision-making, allowing us to quickly and often subconsciously assess how to act in uncertain situations. While this principle can be harnessed for positive ends, it's also essential to recognize its potential for manipulation, making an understanding of social proof invaluable for both influencing and being influenced. The fourth principle in Cialdini's Influence the Psychology of Persuasion is authority, a cornerstone in understanding how people are influenced and how to wield influence. Imagine you're a job applicant aiming to impress in an interview for your dream position. You can employ the principle of authority by subtly highlighting your experience and qualifications, as well as any awards or recognition you've received in your field. Instead of saying, I think I would be good at this job because I'm organized, you could say, in my previous role, I was responsible for restructuring the team workflow, which led to a 20% increase in productivity and earned me the Employee of the Month Award. By speaking in this manner, you come across as an authority in your area, making it more likely that the interviewers will view you as a strong candidate. The authority principle suggests that people are more inclined to follow the opinions or actions of someone whom they perceive as knowledgeable and credible. This is why you'll often see advertisements featuring doctors endorsing a particular medication or a celebrity chef recommending a kitchen appliance. We're hardwired to trust and follow figures of authority. In his book, Cialdini talks about how the use of titles, clothes, and even props can create an aura of authority that many people find irresistible. He cites studies showing that people are more likely to give change for a parking meter to a complete stranger if that stranger is dressed in a security guard's uniform. This is because the uniform itself exudes authority and increases compliance. It's also crucial to understand the potential for misuse of the authority principle. Just as the principle can be used to enhance your credibility, it can be exploited to manipulate people into false beliefs or harmful actions. For example, some scams rely on faked credentials to lure victims into trusting them, 
which underscores the importance of evaluating the legitimacy of the authority figure and the context in which their authority is being asserted. In summary, the principle of authority is a potent tool for influence, but comes with its ethical considerations. While it can be used positively, such as improving compliance in a healthcare setting, it's vital to be aware of how it can be manipulated. This makes understanding the authority principle important not only for those looking to gain influence, but also for anyone looking to protect themselves from undue manipulation. The fifth key principle that Robert Cialdini discusses in Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion, is liking. This principle delves into the power of personal affinity and how being likable can significantly impact your level of influence over others. Suppose you are a salesperson looking to close a crucial deal with a potential client. Utilizing the principle of liking, you might take time to find common interests or shared experiences to build rapport. Maybe both of you enjoy golfing or have kids of the same age. By discussing these topics and genuinely engaging with the client, you'll likely increase your likability and thereby your influence over the client's decision-making process. The liking principle is based on the simple but profound concept that we are more inclined to say yes to requests from people we like. Human beings naturally gravitate towards those who are similar to them, who give them compliments, and with whom they share a sense of cooperation. These are key factors that contribute to the liking principle. In his book, Cialdini describes experiments that demonstrate the effectiveness of this principle. For instance, in negotiation scenarios, finding even a single point of similarity between negotiators can create a more collaborative atmosphere, facilitating a successful deal for both parties. Cialdini also touches on the halo effect, wherein our overall impression of a person can be influenced by one likable quality, making us more amenable to their requests or propositions. Just like the other principles, liking too can be misused. Sometimes people artificially forge similarities or give insincere compliments to invoke this principle and manipulate outcomes. Therefore, it's essential to be mindful of genuine versus manipulated likability and to be aware that this tactic might be employed to influence you. In summary, the liking principle is a powerful tool that can both aid in creating beneficial social bonds and be used manipulatively to secure agreement or compliance. Whether you're aiming to build a strong professional network, close a sale, or simply foster better interpersonal relationships, understanding the mechanics and ethical boundaries of liking can offer you a significant advantage. The final principle discussed by Robert Cialdini in his book, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion, is the principle of scarcity. This rule delves into how perceived scarcity generates demand, making people more likely to value what is less available. Imagine you are hosting a limited time workshop on a highly sought after skill in your field. Instead of making it open-ended, you create a sense of urgency by offering only a few seats or making it available for a short period. By doing so, you tap into the principle of scarcity, making the workshop more appealing and motivating people to take action quickly. The scarcity principle is grounded in the psychological concept of fear of missing out, FOMO. When people believe something is in limited supply, their desire for it increases. This is not just because of its intrinsic value, but because of the potential loss or regret associated with missing out on it. The idea is that opportunities seem more valuable when their availability is limited. In his book, Cialdini discusses various studies and examples to illustrate how scarcity influences human behavior. He highlights that not only does scarcity increase the value of an item, but it also leads to a sort of competitive urgency. For example, in a bidding war, the item being bid on gains value as it becomes less and less available, often driving people to act irrationally or against their best interests. Cialdini warns that the scarcity principle is potent and can often lead to poor decision-making as people can be driven by emotion rather than rational analysis. Just like other principles of influence, scarcity can also be misused. Some marketers employ tactics like limited time offers or while supplies last to invoke a false sense of scarcity, thereby manipulating consumers into making hurried decisions. Understanding how this principle operates not only allows you to use it effectively, but also defends you against such manipulative tactics. In summary, the principle of scarcity is a compelling factor in human decision-making. It can drive demand, make opportunities appear more valuable, and prompt quick action. However, it's crucial to be aware of its potential to cloud rational judgment and lead to poor choices. By understanding this principle, 
you can harness its power for constructive purposes while guarding against its manipulative potential. This were the six principles from Robert Cialdini's book, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. If you learned something new today, share, like, and subscribe so you can stay up to date with the future content. If you want to buy the book, you'll find some links in the description. As always, thanks for watching and see you soon.